Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And today I'm going to go over the most of the gear that I'll be taking with me on my upcoming hike of the Pacific Crest Trail in 2021. I was thrilled and felt very blessed that I got my permit approval yesterday. Normally it takes several weeks, but I got it, so it's a go. go over the, you know, the big three and the majority of the gear, and then I'm going to do things like clothing and other stuff in another video or I'm going to do some of it here, but there's just a lot. So the pack I'm going to be using is the Gossamer Gear Mariposa, as I mentioned in another video. And what I did was I outfitted it with two Lycra pouches from Superior Wilderness Designs, which fit great. Uh, the bottles sit really well with that. I also got the small hip belt because it comes with a medium hip belt, but it's already riding a little tight so, or loose, so I like having the small one so that when it gets looser, I'll be able to have that. I'm going to be using the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Lee, and I did swap out the included carbon fiber pole for an aluminum pole, and then it does use one carbon fiber strut. I bought an extra one there just in case because carbon fiber has a tendency to break catastrophically when it does break. So I wanted to pause really quick and talk about ways that you can save on gear. Um, I had to look into this because obviously I couldn't afford to just buy all new gear. But what I found is a lot of the cottage companies and bigger companies and all companies now are doing what they call a cosmetic blemish or seconds or things like that. And you can really save a lot of money by buying options like this. They always come with the same warranties and same guarantees and you can save a great deal of money. This is how I've bought a lot of my gear replacements that I've had to buy. Uh, REI is also a great outlet. They have used gear, they have an outlet, great return policies. So I just wanted to sort of bring this up because there really are a lot of great ways to save money on new or slightly used gear. And honestly, anytime there's been something with like a cosmetic second or blemished, I've never found anything wrong with the gear. And I've saved to date over $400, I think. And a lot of these places like Camp Saver offer you a 20% off your first full priced item. And really, a lot of times it's just like last year's model. It's the same piece of gear. It's just one year old. And you can save hundreds of dollars. And I'll be going over some clothing in my next video that I saved hundreds of dollars on just because I bought a year old model. But it was still new. So just I wanted to mention that because I know it can often be intimidating and hard to find stuff that we can afford. So just on this jacket, I saved almost $200, which is incredible. And it was the only reason I was able to buy it. And I'll be going over all my clothes in the next video. I just wanted to use it as an example. Um, I'm using uh, eight ten stakes to go with the tent. It usually, it only requires six, but I'm carrying a two extras just in case. I am using a Z-Pax ground sheet, which is uh, DCF. Uh, I think it's the duplex size, but it fits nicely with this tent. And I brought some extra guy lines. This tent has some extra tile points on the ridge line. And again, a lot of this is gonna be the same as last year. And a lot of this is new because my stuff was stolen. So that's why it doesn't look used. So for food storage, I using the same thing I did last year. I bought a new Ursac Miner, which I think is a great bag. But this year I did buy a different outer bag. I used the Dyneema bag just to keep it waterproof and give it a little extra layer of protection. And I'm using the Light AF bag this year because the Ursac actually fits horizontally, making it really easy to store in the pack. It hangs great, just a much better fit this time. I'm using the Thermares near X-Therm. I bought this last summer. Unfortunately, I only got to use it a couple of weeks before it was stolen, but thankfully I did get this on sale. Got it for about $159. It retails for, I think, $100 more than that. I love this pad, not only just for its warmth, but it's just much more heavier duty. It's got a 70 denier bottom and a 30 denier top. I think most of the other Thermarests, they range from 30 denier on the bottom all the way down to 15. And this just is just much more durable. Um, obviously I didn't have that much experience with it, but it just, in comparison to with some of the other ones I've seen, it seems a lot more dur durable and I like having that security. I am using it with an old, uh, light AF stuff sack that I have, which it fits perfectly in and is half the weight of 
the stuff sack it comes with, which just helps keep it protected while stuffed in the pack or wherever. New gear item this year is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex Pants, which are absolutely amazing. They are crazy warm. They pack down amazingly into this small size light AF stuff sack. And I got them custom with the 7D fabric on the inside, size small waist and 32 inseam. And these are just tubes of warmth. I mean, for they weigh about 5.5 ounces. And for me, I just like having them for around camp. I found last year that I was cold sometimes at night. I was lucky enough to get these on the Black Friday sale. They're super warm, they're super light. They pack down crazy small. I just, the, I definitely would get the 7D fabric on the inside. I went with the 10D on the outside. I've been using the Torrid Apex jacket for years, which I also had to rebuy. And I also got the 10D fabric on the outside and the 7D on the inside. For me, I just find that to be the most comfortable. Between my jacket and pants, they weigh just a little over 12 ounces, which I think is incredible. These are just two of the best warmth to weight ratio things out there and a great buy, price-wise, I mean. For my quilt, I'm using the Mountain Laurel Designs Spirit 28 quilt. That quilt is absolutely amazing. I've actually had it for a couple years now. I didn't bring it with me last year, but it is a synthetic quilt and it is just incredibly warm. I would actually rate it at lower than 28 degrees and that actually can fit into that stuff sack right there. I also am planning on wearing the Mountain Laurel quilt bag liner, which is the lightest liner on the market in the citrus orange color, mainly just because it helps keep your, if you're using a liner, it'll help keep your bag clean and you won't have to wash it as much. And it adds about five to eight degrees of warmth if needed. I do carry a small med kit. Uh, I do have the uh, outdoor research um, bug net, but this one has like a ring on it. So it keeps the bug net part out of your face when you're walking. So that if you're like sweating, it doesn't get stuck to your face. I don't really cook on trail, but I always carry just a small uh, little titanium alcohol stove. And actually I use it, this is a burnt one that you can easily use alcohol or the tabs. And I usually just carry a few of the tabs because I never cook. It's just for like emergencies, if I have to boil water or if it's really cold and I have to melt snow or something. And then I carry this little toques uh, titanium pot that I'll, you know, drink out of and, or, you know, make my, uh, you know, coffee or cold soak things in. I, for, for food, I really just eat a lot of like superfoods that I've ground up and made into powders and bars and things like that. I don't really ever cook. Um, my ditty bag is just the Z-Pax, a small little dry bag. Another thing that I am doing this year that is different is I was always using Nylofoon pack liners and they work great, but I just figured since I'm going to be doing this more and for a while now, I just went with the the DCF one by Z Packs, which is great because it's just it fits so well and you can just dump all your gear in there and roll it up and you know you have that security that the it's going to remain dry. And I also upgraded the pad to the uh, airflow pad, which I think works for me. It works great. It is a little stiffer, but it has a lot more airflow and it's a lot easier to take in and out if you're planning on using it as a sit pad. Now, my clothing I keep in a Hyperloop Mountain Gear large size pillow stuff sack. And I know a lot of people don't like these or they don't, they can't get comfortable in a pillow like this, but for me, they work great. Um, it, you know, it unstuffs and on the inside there's like a, um, a fleece side to it. So yeah, I have used somewhat something similar for this for uh, several years. Last year, the one I used was slightly different. This one I got is bigger, which is going to be definitely a lot better because that was one thing I wanted was a little bit bigger of a, of a pillow. A lot of the gear is the same as I've carried for the last few years. I just had to repurchase it unfortunately and uh but i know i made a video earlier this year on the new gossamer gear mariposa so i did want to talk real quickly on that they did come out with a new model it's it's very similar it just doesn't have the same shoulder straps or hip belt padding and it also does have a slightly different fit and i had talked to them i bought two of their new versions i tried it in a medium and a large and i just it just didn't feel the same and this is the one that I had last year 
uh, this model and I was really you know, just sad that I couldn't get it again. And when they ran out of their new batch, they happened to have some of these uh, older generations left over that do include the, the wider webbing. So I got really lucky because I basically got the exact pack that I wanted. And like I said, if there's anybody that's looking to put shoulder strap pockets on like a Gossamer gear pack, you know, and they don't want to cut their straps, the Superior Wilderness Designs Lycra pouches fit wonderfully. And all you need to do is really clip off that one D-ring up here and fit their hardware on there and then fit the other hardware um, hook on the bottom there. And then of course, I just tied it off the top with some bands just to make it a little sturdier but these pouches are great they can fit like a water bottle or a bear spray or your phone or uh, your garmin whatever you want to put in there so i decided to just from last year's experience um, i was always using the mini groundhogs and they work great i love them and i still am going to carry them but i did get two of the regular groundhogs for the opposite ends of the corner of the tent and then i got these two longer nine inch aluminum msr stakes so they're slightly heavier but they're great for a dead man the double rainbow probably isn't going to be as good in the wind as something like the stratus fire league which is what i was carrying i don't have that much experience with it yet so i can't speak that intelligently on it but i did want to have some bigger stakes because last year even with the stratus fire league i did want um, I did wish I had some bigger stakes. So just to touch on a few more things, obviously I'm going to be carrying my Summit Bum through pack fanny pack, the new one that I got. And um, for my electronics, I do carry a big 20, 20 milliamp anchor uh, power bank, and it's just awesome. It just is amazing, so it's worth the wait to me. Carry this little Nightcore tent lamp so I can read and stuff at night, just have some light. And then as far as charging cables, I have a few, but if you want like a fast charging cable, you want to make sure you get uh, a generation, a USB 3 Gen 2 cable, something that actually is going to be able to char fast charge your devices. And that really helps with recharging the power bank, things like for my plug, I use this little RAV power plug that has uh, one USB-C plug and then one regular smart USB plug. And I love this thing. It weighs only a few ounces and is small, folds up, it works great. I carry a full-size Garmin, which I absolutely love. Um, I just love having the topographic maps. I love its battery life is crazy, crazy long. And it just works great. I love being able to communicate with people when I don't have cell service. Uh, for my flashlight and lighting, I use this little flashlight by Phoenix, which I love. It's got this bell clip. So this is actually one of the things that wasn't stolen because I had it you know, in my pants. And uh, it's great. It has 1600 lumens max capacity. And even at the highest rating, it'll stay on for you know an hour and a half. And at the lowest seven, setting over 70 hours. And this small little thing only weighs about 3.1 3 ounces. And I, when I need it as a headlamp, I just clip it onto my rim of my hat and it, it just works great. It's of course USB rechargeable. And I just love having the versatility of having a flashlight. And if I need it as a headlamp, I just do this. And I've just found it to work great. So I don't even carry an extra headlamp anymore. Although I do have this, which is just a $16 a hat that has a built-in uh, LED rechargeable headlamp. That's awesome. The whole thing only weighs three ounces. So it's a hat and light built into it. So I'll use that if I need it in like the, the colder areas in the Sierra. For water, I'm just using the same thing as last year. I mean, it's new. I just, but it's the same and it worked great last year, which is the CNOC. Uh, water bag with the bee free cation bee free filter and uh, just make sure if you do do that combo you get the cnoc bag that has the 42 millimeter i believe the one that goes with that size and then a few other things i didn't mention i do carry i'm going to carry the it's a two ounce liner for the double rainbow lee just to help with condensation in certain areas and i also did get this uh, sort of top rack for the tent it's it's weighs like less than an ounce and it's it's just awesome to for storage because in this tent uh, there is like one or two little storage pouches near the doors and the way i managed this was i put it on the top of the tent using these that i got from z packs 
they offer them in all different kinds. And these are just like toggle, toggle loops that fit with the end of these. And then I reinforced it with some of their heavier duty uh, patches. And uh, yeah, I've tested it out so far. It works great. And they have all different kinds that you bought, you can buy. I bought a whole bunch just because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it and what else I might uh, do with I'll be doing another video with clothing and more indie uh, reviews on certain things. Uh, I do use some of these really small S beaners. Uh, it you know, weighs, I think, like 0.2 ounces or something. It's what I do is because I store my tent on the outside of my pack in one of the pockets. I've heard stories of people like, you know, their tent or their pack brushes up like a a tree or something and they've lost a huge piece of gear because they didn't feel it. Well, I just attached the one top of the S beaner like up through this and then the other through like one of the toggle loops here just to sort of help keep everything secure. And, that way you don't... and from talking to people at the PCT org, obviously the trail crews haven't been able to go out as much. So the trail is going to be a lot more grown over in a lot of areas. So I just thought this was a good extra precaution to take. Okay, guys, well, I will be making another view video soon with um, all the clothing items and some other various gear that I didn't get to go into detail with. Uh, I hope everybody is staying healthy and safe. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear about your plans and I'd love to hear about any uh, pieces of gear that you're uh, going to be reviewing or if you've used any of these pieces of gear and have info on it. I'd love to hear from you guys. 